What's up guys, Pixel105 here and welcome back to another video and today we'll be discussing our thoughts and opinions about the new patch for Total War Warhammer 3 aka patch 4.2 and this time I'm back with once again the Raw Dude Hello everyone, glad to be back here with you Space Knights. Let's get this going. So tell me, Radu, what are your thoughts on Patch 4.2? Well, I mean, it is a good thing that they're adding more content to DLC because it was severely lacking, especially with that kind of a price point. That's way overpriced. Like, I knew it was going to be a bit of a price hike since it was going to be three factions instead of the usual two back in Lord Pax with Warhammer 2, but that was way too high of a jump, and I think it had, if not the same, a little bit less content than the other Lord Pax back in Warhammer 2 days. Yeah, you're Right, but that's why in this new patch they decided to add more new stuff. New lords and heroes, new units, a new lore of magic, and two new legendary heroes. And that is what we're going to talk about in today's video. But we're also going to react to the sneak peek of the return of a very old classic RTX. So why don't we start checking out the new stuff they added for Grand Cathay. Starting with Cathay's first ever legendary hero, a terracotta sentinel by the name of Satan the Watcher. The sentinel of the heavens. And he's also a flying terracotta sentinel. Baseline, he can't fly. It says so in the blog. What? But he has wings! That's more for looks and more than anything, although he can leap up in the air. The whole point is that in the blog it says in his lore that the reason he has those wings is not only to look cool and badass, was also so that way he could jump from mountaintop to mountaintop to survey and watch the land, especially the borders in the uh, mountains of heaven. Okay, so his wings give him a jump boost. Now that is an impressive legendary hero. I think it's the first time we had a legendary hero that's an actual monster. So that way it's not just a copy and paste terracotta sentinel with say gold or some other like thing. He's actually unique. Imagine the bone giant seeing this guy. It's kind of like that meme of like, I'm you, but better. If I ever get this DLC, like sometime in the future, I'll definitely try Cafe out, either one of them, and give this guy a try in a campaign. And next up, we have the Great Moonbird. Well, it's definitely interesting, and I try to look at this more like, rather than reskins, it's like, okay, how does this help the faction in the long run? And definitely gives more aerial support for Cathay's, considering that at launch they had only balloons and a uh, great long mod, if I recall. And fun fact, and this is also some new lord, just to let you know, they are also favored by the Moon Empress, and they built their nests in the craters of Mansby the silver moon. Oh, this is new lore as well. Like, I didn't know about these birds until reading this blog, so. The first time I saw that, it reminded me of Toucan Sam from Fruit Loops. Again, I'm not gonna be one of those guys that bums out for reskins, because it's obviously just a phoenix with a unique head model. The thing that I am most interested about this is being an amount option for the Astromancer. So it gives me more reason to have him in my main army. Yay, so he doesn't have to be on a giant whooshing thing or on a horse. He can just fly around. Exactly. You'll never catch me, crabs. Not when I shift into maximum overdrive. Hiya! I knew I should have gotten the turbo. Next up, we have the new hero type for Grand Cafe, the Gate Master. It was definitely a needed uh, type of hero because Cathay needed some kind of like melee hero to stand in the front with the units. Although it's interesting that he decided to use his shield being like the actual shape of a gate. Like really on the nose with your job, man. Like, yeesh. Uh, he also has a crossbow, if I recall. So he's a hybrid hero, which makes him even more unique than I originally thought he was going to be. And I can't believe Terra just turned the freaking gate master into Hatsune Miku. And finally, we have the Celestial Lion. Of the Cathay Editions, this is my personal favorite just because it looks so cool. Yeah, with the colorful feathers on his wings, that's art. And this lion also has a roar that can spread terror on all enemies that surround it. And they are also mount options for your Celestial Generals. Next up, let's take a look at the new stuff they added for ya boy, Zinch. Starting with Zinch's new lord type, me, the Chaos Lord of Zinch Melee Edition. Well, he looks 
really cool, like something out of 40k almost with a thousand suns sort of thing. Oh, yeah, Especially yeah. I love the unique model and actually looks Zinchian and not just a Chaos Warrior General reskin and just colored blue. Imagine him with a Doom stack of Doom Knights. And yeah, that's the part I like about him very much is that now the Doom Knights could actually have some single entity to help buff him up. Especially since this guy, if I recall, he could actually regenerate barriers in combat. Next up, we got the new hero type for Zinch. The Exalted Hero of Zinch. Now, this guy was the main attraction for me in the Zinch blog, especially with how unique he really is. And if you look very closely, there are three heads in total. The two on the sides, like far left and far right, each have one eye, but no mouths. Whereas the one in the middle has no Whoa. eyes, but a mouth. And what makes the Exalted Hero very special is his opportunist ability, which if your lord gets defeated or dies in battle, he still bolsters the leadership of your armies. Yeah, in fact, I think the Skaven Chieftain has that ability already in game, so it looks like they had decided to add it to this guy here. Next up, we have a new type of God Touch Beastman, the Centigors of Zinch. I was not expecting this, like, Centigors of Zinch? I thought it was going to be focused only just the Gores. Well, I mean, we already had that with the actual DLC, remember? Yeah, the Beakless Zangors. Yeah, which, by the way, after looking through the blog, it seems like that's purely a Games Workshop decision, not Creative Assembly. Yeah, they really want to separate the unique beak-looking Zangors to Age of Sigmar only, for some dumb reason. Even though the actual demons that we have in the game are actually Age of Sigmar models. Including the Keeper of Secrets. Well, not only him, also the lore change and the Grey Unclean ones. And I think that Great Book of Grudges mentioned this in a video a long time ago, where there were Zangors in a mobile game called Chaos and Conquest, I believe it was. Yeah. And the Zangors there did not have beaks as well. I will say that it was the most surprising thing out yeah, of this entire like, blog. So I was like, wait, but what? Centigors is more of a Sunesh thing if you read about their lore based on how rowdy and drunk and other stuff that I cannot say on YouTube <laughs> that they do here. After looking over again, I can understand why they made this decision as weird as it is because it does fulfill a unique role that Sunesh was lacking. Fast, armor piercing cavalry. Because the knights, they are really heavily armored, but they don't do a lot of armor piercing. They're more to like charge in as well as to stay in combat and take hits. And plus, with the Centigors, if I recall, I think I saw a gameplay video where they're actually in like tier 2 or tier 3 building. So you can get these guys pretty early. And finally, we have the Change Bringers. This one is like regular flamers and a squad on this. And from what I've seen, they seem to be very effective. Like, very, very fragile, mind you. Very fragile. But unlike other regular flamers, they can actually just go over and just blast below them. And also, one thing I forgot to mention that I don't know if you know, but all these changes going on, they actually affected some of the starting units and whatnot for the three legendary characters. So for example, you want Bo, he doesn't start with an alchemist anymore. He now starts with a gate master. And not only that, but the changing, if I recall, he doesn't start with a unit of flamers anymore. He now actually has a unit of change bringers with him. As for Mother Ostankia, she starts with a new unit called Kislevite Warriors, which we will talk about them in a bit. And lastly, let's take a look at the new stuff they added for Kislev. Starting with the new lore of magic, the lore of hack. Now, one, this was absolutely needed. Number two, the thing that I found very unique about this is how it's like a coin flip almost. Well, not exactly random, but hopefully you get what I mean, two sides of a coin. And that if you cast the regular version, it's just purely against enemies when it comes to like debuffs, uh, blasting magic, or draining health. But if you overcast it, not only does it do damage or debuff the enemy, but if your own units are in the way, it actually buffs or heals them. And if you'd like to learn more about the spells and its buffs and debuffs, you can check out the blog for more information. Next, we have Kislev's new lord type, me. Again, the Druzina. Yeah, so it's obvious that this guy is supposed to represent the more rural side of Kislev, whereas like the boyars are the guys in charge of cities, these guys are in charge of villages on sort of the outskirts in the more forested or rural areas of Kislev. I mean, it does suck that we don't have hack mothers because it's obvious that Games Workshop said, oh, Astanki is the only hack mother for some reason. I think this guy fits somewhat well when it comes to like having more of a loreful second army choice instead of boyars and ice witches, which, while well, I've seen, does not make sense at all. And yet again, seems like a Games Workshop decision, not Creative Assembly. I can already see that I'm gonna like this guy more than a Huntsman General because one, he's beefy, two, he actually can get mounted on like the Huntsman General, and three, he has a big big freaking axe with armor piercing, so that makes him way more useful than Huntsman General will ever be. And next up, we have Kislev's second legendary hero, the Golden Knight herself, Nariska Lesa. And also, why does her armor look like she's a Protoss? Like, what the heck? You must construct more pylons. 
Yep. <laughs> uh, what can I say? She looks a baller. But what makes her really special is her inspiration trait. Meaning the more damage she takes, the more determined your troops that's around her can continue fighting. Hey, that's pretty good. Yeah, it perfectly fits Kizla's theme about the harder you beat them, then the more determined they are to stay their ground. So from what I've seen with regarding some gameplay videos when this came out, is that she's not as much armor piercing as other legendary heroes, but the whole point is that she can take a lot of damage and dish out to lords and heroes specifically, or single anti units, aka the perfect bodyguard, which is lore accurate for this one because this is the bodyguard of Katarina. Another lore thing as well, the Snariska Lesa, she's the daughter of the previous Golden Knight, which the Golden Knight is supposed to be the personal bodyguard of any Tsar or ruler of Kislev, and her father was the Golden Knight for Tsar Boris, who unfortunately died. And for some reason, he's back. It's kind of like, like fathers and daughters. Yeah, except that uh, Katarin is a wizard unlike Boris. Next, we have the new units, starting with the Kislevite Warriors. I think this is a perfect addition for Kislev, especially since not every unit has to be a centerpiece monster. Like, obviously we should have those to justify the wow factor and price of a DLC, but this, it will be super useful because from what I've seen, these are a tier one troop. Again, they don't have range, they're not a hybrid, but they have uh, halberds or kind of slapped on halberds, as you see, like a bunch of them are pitchforks with axes just slapped on, but they're anti-large. They have a tiny bit of armor piercing. They're very cheap and they can actually stay and a long time in combat. Like I saw a Monsters Abound video, and these guys can really stand their ground for tier 1 infantry. And I bet that'll make Kislev campaigns in the early game a lot easier and more manageable. And finally, we have the Frostworm, aka Kislev's very own dragon. More like flightless dragon, because it can fly and it has no wings. This one also surprised me, like not as much as the Dean Centigors. This one surprised me in a better way, I should say. And also, if you look over there to make sure there's no confusion, the Norskin like uh, Frostworm, as it was called before, is now called the Chaos Frost Dragon for Norska. That man's an imposter. That man is the imposter. Plus, there are also mount options for the Ice Witches and Catherine herself. Again, I was expecting the Snow Leopard, to be honest, but this was even better. However, I have seen some recent gameplay on this, and so far it seems that this Frostworm is not doing very well in battles. It seems to be trapped here at the moment so ca please buff this guy oh man there's a glitch where its hitbox is twice as big as it should be therefore it gets beat down too fast and i've seen the animations for this they are really well done it's not just a regular you know like a giant ancient salamander ca took time to actually put unique animations for this guy but please buff him so that way he's better in use in battle but i will try to use him in a kizzle campaign one day once i get the dlc and finally we got the free lc Catherine's freaking sled finally we've been waiting like what two years for this thing to come out yes sir now here is the list of all the old and new stuff they added in both the dlc and patch 4.2 you can pause the video if you want to check it out or you can check the blog post if you want more information so ron dude what do you think of all the big changes they added for the shadows of change dlc in patch 4.2 well i think i'll say what everyone is thinking this should have been at launch just saying it's straightforward right here. And CA, if you are listening to us, which by the way, uh, hello, this is a first step, okay? You should keep up the momentum and make sure this doesn't happen again. This shouldn't have happened in the first place. So make sure this, it doesn't, understand? And also I just wanna say thank you to Total War and Creative Assembly for greeting me a happy birthday. Oh, you did? Nice, congrats. And if I'm correct, I think Thrones of Decay is gonna be your DLC because you said you're a big Nurgle fan, right? I am. Like, as you can tell, I really like orcs, but out of all the Chaos Gods, Nurgle is my personal favorite. Thrones of Decay, like, I've actually, it should be better than this at launch. Just to make sure, to show the fans that, hey, we listened and we're actually going to keep going through with the with the high quality. Well, I hope so, because this is another critique I have about the patch as well. It didn't really seem to change that much regarding the base game races, except Cafe, which had a whole different overall. But Kislev and Zinch, besides some, like, updates or buffs, their mechanics still seem to be exactly the same as launch. But that's not all. We will be also reacting to the sneak peek of Age of Mythology Retold. That's right, the RTS game that we all love so much is finally getting a remaster. And before anything else, let me uh, do something real quick. What do you think? Look at that, looking really nice. Almost like a uh, a blue upgraded Power Ranger helmet. This is my official Space 105 helmet. 
before this was actually a Mandalorian helmet. Oh, I can actually see it now that you mention it. I like it, especially if I look in the back of it. I also want to give a big shout out to the guy who made this helmet. It was incredible and I love the design of it. So thank you, Marius Black Arts, for making this helmet. If you're interested in checking out his work, link is in the description down below. Okay, really cool. Nice job. Props to the artist and uh, congrats on getting this. Are you going to be doing React videos with this on you all the time? <laughs> uh, sometimes. I can still see though. Okay, that's good. You can breathe as well, right? You can breathe in that thing. Good, good. Maybe you can do your own too, but with Warzak's face. Uh, we'll see how far I go with that. Okay, so without further ado, let's begin. Let's do this. Prostagma. Hello, heroes. I'm here in the studio hey, today using augmented reality to step into the world of Age of Mythology retold. Yes, I am standing next to a Titan Gate, and yes, we will get to that very soon. Oh. My name is Melinda Rose, and I am the art director here at World's Edge, and I feel so honored. Uh, to be a part of this team and to be able to show off this game to you that we all have been working so hard on and we love so much. So in Age of Mythology Retold, we're not only upgrading the engine and bringing all of those quality of life improvements that you've come to expect from World's Edge, but in addition to that, we're doing even more to update the art. So that means all new 3D models, all new animations, textures, UI, VFX, the whole shebang. So we are going to be showing okay. off three characters from the Greek civilization, Medusa, Pegasus, and Cerberus. You know, usually you'd be oh. seeing them from high up in the sky as you command your battles, but um, I'm biased and I wanted to show the characters the as close to life size as we yeah. can fit them. Well, without any further ado, let's bring Medusa into the studio. Are you excited? I am so excited. Oh, hello. <laughs> this is so cool to see her in real life like this. She's not so low poly anymore, is she? From this distance, you're able to see all the details we've added to her model to tell her story. Pretty nice graphics. Each strand of her hair is an individual wild snake. She wears Grecian styled golden snake armbands. Her armor is made up of flexible scale mail to mimic scales. And if you're brave enough Makes to sense. get super close and risk being petrified and turned to stone, you can even see her vertical snake-like pupils. All right, well, I don't have any good counters for Medusa in the building today, nice. and we gotta keep this rolling, so I'm just gonna cut straight to her death animation. Medusa, I'm so sorry to see you go. See ya. <laughs> what was that death animation? That was real quick right there. And also the place she ended up, I'm almost imagining like uh, putting her on a spike and frying her. Fried Medusa. <laughs> oh, that's brutal, isn't it? <laughs> well, really quick. Up, let's bring in Pegasus. Oh, hello. Hi, Pegasus. Hercules. Oh, he's so cute, that, isn't he? It's, uh, it so looks Pegasus exactly like him. Pegasus is a majestic winged horse who serves as an archaic age aerial scout for the Greek civilization. This Pegasus looks a little fancier than you may remember, and that is because in Age of Mythology Retold, when you upgrade your myth units through technologies, those units will get a brand new visual upgrade to reflect that increase in power. Excuse me? So you can actually visually upgrade them? Hey, you remember the Cyclops? You can actually upgrade them and give them all. Oh, yeah. I was I was going I was trying to think back if that was an actual thing, but that's more like upgrading the actual unit, really. But that was one of the things. I think the Minotaur as well was that the case too. There's also upgrades to the Colossus as well, changing his armor from bronze to silver and to to silver gold. to gold. Yeah, yeah. Like which by the way it does does not help in real life because gold is very malleable. Looking at the upgraded oh, that's nice. Version I guess today. they're adding it to Say more hello, units Pegasus. now, not just the originals. <laughs> I don't want to keep us too long from the Titan that you're all excited to see. So I'm sorry, Pegasus. We have to say goodbye. Ah, so it adds the expansion too. Oh, oh that makes me so sad. <laughs> all right, last mm -hmm. but not least, let's bring in Cerberus. Ooh, this is my personal favorite. <laughs> this is the Hound of Hades and Titan of the Greek civilization. He's a little smaller Hello again, there. Uh, Hello. than he will be in game, but believe it or not, this was one of the first models that we made for Age of Mythology Retold back when we were trying to decide, you know, what we wanted this game to look like. He wears heavy chains yeah. and tattered armor, which represent his escape from the underworld, as well as the mark of Hades on now, his shoulder. Now this guy is an actual upgrade. Titans have been a upgraded legit. to be more powerful against walls and buildings, and even rivers and oceans won't be able to stop their wrecking power. Oceans? Are you saying this guy can walk on water? Uh, that seems weird. I think that's just a lore or a little description blurb. But if you heard, they actually do more damage to walls and towers. 
which is awesome. Imagine an update to this game that Titans can walk on water. Oh, jeez, that'll be that'll make them OP. But we have to imagine game balance for a little bit, right? Three ferocious heads and more destructive power than ever before. I also like how they added scars a to it too. Formidable opponent or a powerful ally in Age of Mythology retold. <laughs> Okay, well, he is obviously raring to go, and we will see him on the battlefield eventually. I'm sorry, Cerberus, you gotta get going. Oh, oh. <laughs> wish I could do that to my opponents in game. So to wrap things up, our goal is codes. to not only pay homage to the past, but to breathe new life into this game and maximize the mythology. And one more thing before I go, I would like to reveal our official cover art. Featuring so many of the iconic Ooh, gods hello. and heroes. I wanna pause out here and I wanna, I wanna try to remember all the names of the characters here. The girl in the middle is Isis. Mm -hmm. Above her is Zeus. And then all came Zeus he his Next to Zeus is Ra, and Poseidon, and Odin, Thor, Loki. Say my name! My wife loves you! That Gaia, uh, I'm thinking below Gaia is Ares. I beg your pardon? I think it's Athena, because she has an owl and a spear, right? And the trio in the middle, Arcanthus, Amandra, and I forgot the name of the Valkyrie. Um, I did too. <laughs> the whole gang's back. Can't wait to see what Ajax looks like. Especially with the lion head, like Herculean look. That would be awesome. Also Odysseus, Chiron. And also, uh, I forgot the name of Arcanthus' son. Oh, it was actually Castor. Yeah, the gullible guy. If you know, you know. So it's awesome that they are remastering this game and putting both the main game and the expansion together. That is cool. And as well as updating the graphics, hopefully adding some quality of life stuff, like not having the keyboard controls just being the arrow keys, like maybe actually utilizing WAST. Hopefully, please. As much as I I want to get this game, I do. However, in years prior, there was yet another beloved RTS strategy game that was getting remastered by another company that used to be loved, and it did not do so well at launch. AKA Warcraft 3 Reforged. I really wanted to like that at launch. Um, actually, I um, was thinking about trying out the Chronicles of the Second War mod for it now that I got it on sale. A really hefty sale. Uh, do you want to know something crazy? What if I told yes. you there is a Warcraft 3 mod that adds Warhammer? Excuse me? Let me talk about my helmet for a second. What if I told you that there is a Warcraft 3 mod that adds Warhammer Fantasy? I'm looking at a video right now, I can see. Yeah, I'm looking at someone playing the Skaven. It actually looks pretty good. Maybe we can check out that mod together. You know, just to try out some other games too, you know? Maybe one day, I just wonder if this thing supports custom games or custom games of multiplayer, excuse me. Oh yeah, Warcraft 3's custom multiplayer, yep. Sometimes it crashes. I am Love excited it. to announce the Age of Mythology Retold will be available on day one on both PC and Xbox. X Xbox? Xbox? Console? So follow How is that gonna socials work? for behind the scenes concept like art as of, well as before and after fires. comparison Four, images of the three models that we've showcased today. Really sound on Xbox? And don't forget yeah, to wishlist so. us to stay informed in the future. Arcantos will awaken in 2024. He's Thanks funny. for watching everyone. Woo! The main man will return. Yes! Oh, what do you think so, of the trailer? That was awesome! That was definitely a good look into the units there. Only Greek civilization, like they said, but perhaps maybe there are some screenshots on the Steam page or somewhere that show the other civilizations. But I really hope this game does well and has a good launch because there are a few factors that will justify me getting this or it having a good reception. Price point, which I imagine maybe being in US dollars, maybe between 30 to 40 perhaps, if it includes the base game and the expansions and maybe the Chinese as well. Which definitely needs a remake, a reboot, and a re do, even with the very quiet cutscenes. So that's all for today, guys. I hope you enjoy our video of us discussing about Patch 4.2 for the Shadows of Change DLC in Warhammer 3, our reaction to the sneak peek of Age of Mythology Retold, and of course, my new helmet. And if you want to see some more videos in my channel, don't forget to subscribe, slap the bell, like the video, share this video with your friends, and comment down below what you want me to do next. Plus, we just hit 4,750 yes, 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 subscribers. Yes, yes, Thank you for all of your help and support, folks. Congratulations on that Space Knight. Proud of you, man. And hey, if I can reach 4.75k subscribers, so can you, future YouTubers who are watching this video. And once again, thank you, Raju, for joining me in this reaction video. Yeah, always a pleasure to work with you. And thank you for having me, man. Thanks for watching, guys, and we will see you in the next video. Bye.